Now I come to a trigonometry question. And you know, when I saw this question, I said, I have to do it with you guys. You need to do this with me. Because we get these angles and we battle with them. So everybody calculators are on. You have your pen and your pencil ready. Look at the sum. It says here, simplify the following expression. I have a trick question here this afternoon. And I want everybody to write. It says... Cos of 330 multiplied by the sin of 140, the sin of negative 160, the tan of 405 times the sin of 290. Okay, when I see a question like this, then I tell myself we mustn't use a calculator, simplify the following expression without a calculator, no calculators here. We're going to use the calculator now, now the Casio helps quite a bit, but we know we trick. So when I see a question like this, I draw this. I tell myself in this quadrant it's 180 minus theta and in the next quadrant I have 180 plus theta. And in this quadrant, I work with 360 minus theta. Okay, everybody, in this quadrant, it is just theta. When we see questions like this, we don't use 270 minus 270 plus 90 minus or 90 plus. You only use this. Okay, now you have to now take all of these angles need to go to a Acute angles. What is an acute angle? An acute angle is an angle smaller than 90. So now you start and you say, which quadrant is 330 degrees? It is in the fourth quadrant. How is cos in the fourth quadrant? Okay, now what do we use to answer that question? What are you going to use to answer that question? All stations to Cape Town. That is all positive, sin is positive, tan is positive, cos is positive. You're still with me. So I've got 330 is in the fourth quadrant. How is cos in the fourth quadrant? Yeah, cos is positive. So I write down cos. In the fourth quadrant, you say 360 minus. What gives me 330? 360 minus. 30. Or you can say, just take 360 away, and that gives me the cos of 30. Happy everybody? Look how I put it in a bracket. I go and I work out what is the sin of 140. Remember, 140 needs to be taken to an angle smaller than 90 degrees. How do I do that? By asking me two questions. Which quadrant is is 140 degrees second. I had a student the other day that said, ma'am, I don't even know where 140 is. Remember, north to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, 270 to 360. Got that, everybody? So 140 falls into the second quadrant. How is sin in the second quadrant? You're all answering there by your schools. You're saying, ma'am, it is positive. So you're going to say sin in the second quadrant, it's 180 minus what? 180 minus 40 gives me that 140. Some people just say, I take 180 away, that's fine. And that gives me the sin of 40. Okay, so everybody, that's two marks. Now you see a negative angle. Now, how do I teach negative angles? I tell my students, add 360 degrees first. So if I add 360 to that, go to your normal mode now, add 360, you're going to get the sin of 200. So I work sin 200. So if I have a negative angle, I first add 360. That 405 is an angle greater than 360. So what I do, I take 360 away. So if it's a negative angle, what are you going to do? You're going to add 360. If it's an angle greater than 360, you add 360. You guys are just great. So I, I take 360 away. 405 minus 360. Everybody should get 10 off. 
5. Can we just revise that for 2 seconds? A negative angle at 360, an angle greater than 360, take 360 away. Now I have a 290 degrees is in which quadrant? It is in the third quadrant. How is sin in the third quadrant? It is negative. Can you say I always put my sign down first? And what do I do in that it's 360 minus what will give me 290? 360 minus 70 will give me 290. Are you all happy with what I'm doing so far? All right, so now we continue. This 200 is still a problem, so we need to take it to an acute angle. So I'm just going to write that's the cos of 30 degrees multiplied by the sin of 40 degrees divided by, everybody work with me, 200 is in which quadrant? Third quadrant. How is sin in that quadrant? It is negative, and it's 180 plus 20 gives me that 200 then I've got the tan of 45 now the tan of 45 everybody knows it is 1 you can press that on your calculator because it's already an acute angle remember 45 degrees is a special angle so you can just put it on your calculator if you've got 30 60 45 Put it on your calculator because it comes from your special angles. The tan of 45 is 1. Okay, now look at this. This gives me negative sin 70. Okay, now last night while I was preparing this le lesson, I looked at the sum and I said, Eleanor, how are you going to progress from here? What are you going to do? And I know that you're all sitting with this question. So the cause of 30 you can do. Cos of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2, you know. So you take it into your normal mode and you get the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. Where do we get that from? Remember, there's your 30 degree special angle 2, root 3, 1. So cos is root 3 over 2. So the cos of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2. And then I was stuck. I said, oh my word, I don't have a special angle 40. I don't have a special angle 20. And I don't have a special angle 70. And I can see here on the screen, people are not sending through answers because it's tough. You, you're struggling to know what to do. So now you think, you have to think, you have to think. You don't have a special angle. So what do I do? Just watch. I then saw something. Look at this. I saw that 40 degrees is double 20. 40 is 2 times 20. Then I wrote this as, and this is higher grade thinking. See if you can think with me. I wrote it as the sin of 2 times 20. 20 because 2 times 20 gives me 40. I then said a negative times a negative is a positive so my negatives can now fall away and anything multiplied by 1 the 1 can also fall away and the sin is now a negative times a negative is a positive so that is sin 70. Then I went and I said, oh, this is the sin of 2a. The sin of 2a is a double angle identity. The sin of 2a is equal to 2 sin a cos a. You find this on your formula sheet. It's a double angle identity. And I thought to myself, how awesome, because the sum worked out so beautifully. Work it out with me. This is root 3 over 2. The sin of 2a is 2 sin, what is a? a is 20, 2 sin a, cos a. Do you get that, guys? Do you all understand that? Divided by sin 20 multiplied by the sin of 70. Now, what do we do after this? I then saw, 
You know there are some, there's Nani, you are such a clever, clever girl. You already said the answer is the square root of three and that is the answer, but not everybody knows why it's the square root of three. So let me just show them. The sin of 20 cancels with the sin of 20. Oh my word, this two can cancel with that two there. Now comes, can I work out cos 20, sin 70? They cancel in trigonometry because they are co-functions. 20 plus 70 gives you 90, cos and sin. So this and this can cancel. If you put the cos of 20 on your calculator, if I work out the cos of 20, cos 20, can everybody see you all on your calculators? It gives me 0, 0,939. If I work out the sin of 70, I also get 0, 0,939. So they are the same. So if you have 20s or 30s and 60s, if it add up to 90 and you have cos and sin, your sin can be on top and your cos can be at the bottom. It doesn't matter. You can cancel them and your answer is square root 3. And well done to Sevilla. Also, we said it is equal to root 3. That is just fantastic. There is somebody that asked me, ma'am, how do you get the cos of x minus 360? Okay, let me show you quickly because we have a few minutes left. And in those few minutes, I can answer a few of your questions. If I've got the cos of x minus 360, Okay, you first have to see which quadrant is x minus 360. Now, I know everybody has a different way. You have different ways of getting your quadrants. But what I do is I put my x here and I put my negative x there. I hope that you're going to understand that, right? So now where is x? x is here. And if you have 360, it's going to take a whole revolution, an entire revolution, back to the first quadrant. So x minus 360 is in the first quadrant. And how is cos in the first quadrant? It is positive. So when you need to simplify that, your answer is just going to be cos of x. You got that. If somebody asks me, ma'am, how do you get the cos of 90 degrees plus x? Then I am going to see which quadrant am I working in. Plus x is here. Remember, plus x is here. Then you have plus 90. Takes you to the second quadrant. Remember, every block is 90 degrees. If it's positive, you count anti-clockwise and if your angle is negative you go clockwise so that is why x plus 90 is in the second quadrant yes how is cos in the second quadrant it is negative and everybody because you have a 90 your answer changes to sin